So, the thing is, uh, it is a bi a basically a simple calculation. Uh, if we would look at this example, this is an example. Uh, this is a sample financial statement that we can get uh, from SEC. Uh, so, how do we analyze this? We can use uh, there. We can compute for the percentage changes, uh, the peso change. So, in here, the property, plant, and equipment. Uh, 2012 minus 2011 so we would get like 296 million minus 327 million uh, we would get a negative 30 million value so it is a negative amount so it means there is a decrease so a 9% decrease so we would look at here like if we would develop an expectation do we usually expect a uh, cash balance to increase as well as accounts receivable balance on a on a regular basis so actually it depends on the type of the industry to which this company belongs to but why do we usually have an increase in cash or accounts receivable well specifically in accounts receivable we have an increase in accounts receivable because there might be an increase of uh, consumers who have yet to pay their balance as of period end so we can relate this to an increase in sales. So, what matters in the analysis is not just the figure that we have computed, but as well as our analysis on the change. So, in here, we see that 131% and 98% are quite significant changes, but relative to the total amount of the assets that are presented here, we see that uh, the amount of cash and uh, actually the accounts receivable are not that uh, are not the majority component of this uh, balances, but still they have a material change, which caused to uh, which dra which has driven the change in total current assets of forty two percent. So the cash, the increase in cash, might be a uh, might be caused by uh, additional sources of funding but if we will see that the accounts receivable increased also significantly and cash increased as well uh, this might be an indication that the increase in cash might have been brought about by sales how do we verify that we can check the statement of comprehensive income so in here we would see uh, revenues which have increased like from from 410 million we have now 730 million so there is a 320 million increase in sales so this is a good indication that the that the that the financial that the financial statements uh that was presented earlier the statement of financial position presented earlier are consistent with the income statement so we see here uh, the revenues have caused uh, a change in in the total revenues um, so as mentioned uh, it is not just the computation of the percentages that matters here but also the analysis one thing that we need to consider is if we would look at that the net income uh, when we analyze uh, financial statements we tend we should remember that net income and the change in the reserves or uh, yeah, the change in reserves or the the change in reserves pertain to uh, the same thing unless there is uh, there is dividend declared so retained earnings i mean the change in retained earnings and the income for the period should be the same if there are no declaration of uh, dividends for preferred or common stockholders so in the, this is the analysis pertaining to the uh, to the figures presented so in here uh, the analysis mentioned that uh, the 
the depreciation charges might be because of the because of the change in property plant and equipment the thing is actually financial statement analysis is the method that we use when we uh, when we re- when we assess the risks for uh, for the financial statement as a whole in in auditing so as we have learned there is a uh, there is a preliminary assessment of risk and what we do uh, to have an understanding of the uh, balances is we do some financial statement analysis and we establish our expectations and we compare them to the actual figures uh, that we compute on horizontal and vertical analysis uh, the thing is when there is a significant significant deviation on our expectation versus the actual figures computed we take into consideration that amount or line item as significant or with high risk so for the cash in bank there is uh there is a change of 131 uh, percent which is correlated to the increase in sales revenue so now we go to trend percentages so Trend percentages are index numbers showing relative change in financial data resulting with the passage of time. So the difference of horizontal analysis and trend percentages is that trend percentages are uh, are comparison across years. So horizontal analysis is current year minus prior year over prior year. So in here, we use a base year and that base year is converted automatically to 100%. Meaning, uh, that would be our base period. So, uh, the computation here is uh, the current year over base year. So, what is the base year? So, it can be any of the years involved uh, on the analysis, but as long as it represents the normal operating activity of the firm. The thing is, you cannot use uh, the, fir- uh, the first year of operations usually as the base year if it is not that regular yet. Or you cannot use a year wherein there are extraordinary activities for the firm. So basically, the base year is the denominator for all balances. And then when we do this, uh, it's current year over base year. Then we see the trend and then we analyze. So in here, we will have uh, pre-computed, uh, pre-computed uh, trend percentages. We will see here that the year one was used as the base year. So all 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 amounts on the first year are turned into 100 percent then what will you notice for the sales there is a consistent increase in sales which is actually if you would look at that consistent with the increase in accounts receivable because if there is an increase in sales meaning there is a uh, the accounts that we are yet to receive uh, are increasing as well, which is just normal. But we will note here that the bal- the cash balance is in- is decreasing. Initially, it increased, and then it goes at a decreasing manner. Remember that the first year here is the base year. So meaning, uh, the sales from year one to year five, uh, as compared to the sales from year 5 as compared to year 1 are 25% higher. So this is not a comparison between 1 and 2 and then 2 and 3 and then 3 and 4 and then 4 and 5. This is a comparison between 1 and 2 and then 1 and 3 and then 1 and 4 and then 1 and 5. So it says here that the sales are increasing. So that is that is an observation that we can see here. So cash declined. Uh, from year three, years three to five, we can we can correlate that with the significant increases in uh, AR and inventory as well. Uh, the thing is, if 
we will manage our our current assets uh, in such a way that we plan to expand our capacity to sell then we must need to have to maintain higher amounts of inventory and we would actually give up some of our investment in current assets in the form of receivables because uh, they would be they would be held back by the consumers because uh, because the more consumers that we have the higher the amount of receivables that we will most probably maintain so actually uh, what we see in this trend percentages or what we try to analyze in this trend percentages are the consistencies that exist between balances so current liabilities jumped in year five so what we can consider here is because as a result of the increase in inventory and accounts receivable we are not able to uh, we are not able to pay more of the debts that come uh, for the company and one thing that we may consider here as well is that uh, since there is an increase in sales then we need to purchase more uh, more more items in which in turn would result to a higher payable balance to the supplier so uh, let's try to answer this uh, this problem so comparative information is taken from the Aster company so the financial statements are shown below so let us use uh, horizontal analysis here and show the percentage change from 2007 to 2008 with of course 2007 as the base year so for letter a notes receivable so from zero it is now ten thousand so what is the answer here i'll give you some time to answer it now uh okay just unpause and then uh the answer here actually is cannot be because the base here is zero we have to take note of that uh, when the base here is zero you cannot compute for uh, horizontal analysis so you just leave it blank then or not possible next accounts receivable 172,000 in 2008 and 140,000 in 2007 so how do we compute for this 172,000 minus 140,000 divided by 140,000 so what do we get 23% increase so if the yield is positive then it is increased then if it's negative it is decreased how about retained earnings from negative 40,000 it is now 30,000 so what is the change what is the change here there is an increase by of 70,000 because that is 30,000 minus negative 40 so there is an increase of 70,000 so what is uh what is the percentage increase there if you would consider that from a negative number it is now a positive number we cannot compute for the change because it is not definitely a hundred percent or more than a hundred percent because from negative it's now positive so when the base year is negative we cannot compute for the for the horizontal analysis how about sales 830,000 minus 750,000 divided by 750,000 we will get 11 percent increase so for operating expense 170 minus 200 divided by 200 so that would be 30 divided by 200 we will get 15 percent decrease and for income taxes payable 25 minus 20 over 20 that would be 25 percent 